Hey there, Tad Hargrave from MarketingForHippies.com here to talk about stay in touch marketing. I remember years ago, somebody from Calgary told me that the average um, person refinanced their home every five years. So this would have been 15, 20 years ago. But every five years, people would refinance their mortgage. And she said, how many, what percentage of them do you think go back to the mortgage broker they originally used the, when they used the five years before? I said, well, I don't know, 50%? And she said, 2%. 2% go back to the mortgage broker. Why would they not go back to the, or they go to a different one? Why wouldn't they go back to the one they used before? It's so much easier. They already have a relationship with them. They know them. They got their contact info. Well, let me ask you this question. Uh, five years ago, are you still in touch with the same people you were in touch with? Five years ago, do you live in the same city? Are you in the same romantic relationship? A lot can change in five years. And uh, if we don't stay in touch with people, you know, they often don't stay in touch with us. So this is so, so true in the lives of our clients. Unless there's some way that we're able to stay connected to our clients, we just drift apart and it's normal and it's fine. It's proper that um, it should be that way. It just happens. So there's a kind of entropy um, on our email list, on our social media feeds. And if we don't ever email people, if we don't ever post anything on Facebook, we just sort of vanish and the moving parade of life keeps on going and they're carried away down the street. And maybe they think about us from time to time in a sort of passing way, but they have other urgent business to attend to that isn't us. So much of marketing is about staying in touch. I remember hearing about a study, I mean, this is uh, old, old, but uh, somebody had done some number crunching and realized it costs six times more to get a new client than to um, keep an existing one cost six times more because that initial bit is like an airplane taking off you know most of the fuel is used in the takeoff and then once it's in the jet stream it's pretty smooth uh, I was gonna say smooth sailing but you know what I'm saying uh, that's almost all the effort is the takeoff so it's the same with the relationship with the client almost all the energy is in that initial bit and why because they don't know who we are they don't trust us their guards up understandably there's a bit of, well, prove it to me. And once we've proved it, you know, once we've established the relevance, the credibility and value the first time, we don't have to do it in the same way ever again. Uh, that's gonna be fine. And then there's just a matter of timing. You know, sometimes somebody will come to us in a crisis or will come because they're suffering some symptoms, we help them, things get a bit better, other priorities appear, and they may vanish for years. And then when they have that problem again, you would think, oh, well, they'll come back to me. If they remember your name, if they remember your website, sometimes I think we overestimate and overinflate our sense of importance in their lives. Uh, we may just be somebody they saw, you know. Um, think back to a time you were struggling and the practitioners you saw that were helpful. Do you really remember all their names? That massage therapist you really used to love, do you know their name anymore? I can think of a few massage therapists I remember I remember that I had one I really liked. I'm actually trying to remember right now. It was back when I was living closer to 124th Street and then she moved and I didn't have a car and she moved across town. I was like, I, I just, sorry, you know, I can't, that's, that's gonna cost me too much now. And I can't even remember her name and I really liked her. So it's gonna be like that which is an, a good reason to have a memorable business name, uh, one that's easy to recall, uh, not one that's difficult to recall, difficult to spell. But how do we stay in touch? So there's a, you know, it's not an infinite number of ways. Having an email where we regularly send stuff that our people might actually want to see, all the various forms of social media are certainly a way of staying in touch. But you can do this in person too. For years, you know, I would throw parties. Whenever I'd go to Toronto, I'd invite my favorite past clients to come and I'd host a party. Sometimes I'd cater it, sometimes it would be a potluck. And it was amazing. I mean, predictable and amazing. People would come to the parties and as they're leaving, it's like, hey, next time you're in town, let me know. Or, hey, you've got that workshop coming up in a week. Send me the, the info and I'll spread the word. Because I was sort of reconnected to them. 
so you can do events where you actually bring together you know uh, your, your clients customer appreciation parties that kind of thing are a great way when you're in a nonprofit and fundraising there's a, a thought well we just need new funders but sometimes in fact often what you need is actually just to deepen your relationships with your existing funders and sometimes people think oh I need new clients but often you just need to deepen your relationship with your existing clients you know um, this to me is the antidote to all the insanity is is depth uh, all the pushiness and desperation and you know diabolical tactics and marketing are solved by going deeper and one of the places we go deeper is in our connection with our existing clients and that can also be one-on-one -on -one outreach that can be you sit down one day and you look over your client list and you figure out I don't know who are my top uh, 20 50 100 clients and you send them individual notes just hey I was thinking about you and here's an article that I thought you might like you know you could have a stack of just a hundred business cards of your favorite clients and uh, let's say it's 90 and every day you just look at three of them and you think is there anything that I, I could send to this person that comes to mind you just meditate for one minute three minutes a day and at the end of the month you've gone through 90 people and then maybe you know you go a whole month and nothing comes to mind to send them but one day you may think, oh yeah I should send the, oh I just came across this article why didn't I think of that person you sent it their way that's a way of staying in touch um, there's all sorts of ways but it's not infinite the important thing is that we have a few that we use uh, you know and we we use them consistently because if you see a client and then two years later they get an email from you it's probably all over you know they've probably moved on at that point it's it's a little hard to wake up a dormant list because they're not just dormant they're vacant uh, often they've, they've moved on so there you go I just realized I've never done a video about this stay in touch marketing once you've um, you know gotten in touch you have to stay in touch with them and stay in touch in a way that's going to add value to their lives that they're going to be glad they have that the, uh, the other thing I should say is one of the reasons Netflix Hulu you know uh, Apple TV Disney plus all these um, services have done so well is because they eliminated commercials can you imagine that people hate commercials so much I mean God it's half the program these days literally on uh, cable TV but they eliminated the ads people were willing to pay you know nine bucks a month to not see ads and so if everything they get from you is an ad they're gonna tune out the ratio of 10 to 1 is probably useful for every 10 pieces of value they get from you it earns you the right that one thing is just a straight-up shameless plug so that's worth um, that's worth thinking about when we stay in touch how do we stay in touch uh, staying in touch in a way that they're glad where it's not just commercial after commercial if you give money to a nonprofit and then the next thing you guys request for money you give more money the next thing is a request for more money and there's no building the relationship there's no connecting with you there's no inviting you to special events there's no handwritten notes there's another way to do it there's not you know it's you start to feel like oh the only reason I matter to this nonprofit is for uh, it's for my money that's all they want from me at all and they're never gonna stop asking uh, so you need to, you need to show them here's what your money went to here's what it's done okay I could keep going on but I think that's enough thanks so much everyone